time I've done this, I've hired people, you know, maybe not the first day, but again, consistently doing it for amount of time does produce great results. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Contractor Success Academy lesson. Now the man that you see here in front of you, not me, but you're gonna see in a second, he's uh, in front of a sign, this is Tony Hody. This is not Tony Hody, this is Kyle Powers. Kyle, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So Kyle, um, obviously you're a coach and consultant for Tony Hody uh, today. It wasn't always that way. You've been in the home improvement space for, for quite a while. You've worked for reputable companies like Tundraland. I think you helped start uh, Mad City or you were doing some marketing stuff there. We'll kind of get into some of that. Uh, basically, Tundraland was what kind of caught our interest and why we wanted to have you on here. You're the senior brand manager there, that company. Uh, they've got you know tons of accolades, a qualified remodeler, top 500. Uh, remodeling Big 50, Inc. 500 is America's, you know, one of America's fastest growing private companies. All interesting stuff. And you in particular uh, have a lot of knowledge around recruiting and events and things like that. So we said, hey, we need to get Kyle on here. So thank you. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about recruiting uh, and basically the systems and how to go about supercharging uh, the process of recruiting, right? Correct. Awesome. Good. Well, uh, let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. We can screen share and get into the presentation. All right. Hello again. Uh, again, my name is Kyle Powers. And as Mark has shared, I've spent a uh, better part of a decade, a little bit longer here in the home improvement space, particularly on the marketing side. Uh, and one of the biggest things to uh, marketing positions and filling entry-level positions as a whole is really how to recruit and how to supercharge that to make sure that you have uh, enough employees, enough staff members to accomplish the task uh, that you have at hand. And the number one question um, that we get at every conference, all the conferences I attend, I mean, different webinars we've been on, the main question is always, how do we recruit staff? And I, I think everybody's looking for that, that magic nugget, that, that golden nugget that, hey, if you just do this, you know, your team will grow and you'll have more you know, representatives for your business than you could ever want. And, and I actually do have the golden nugget and the answer to that, but it <laughs> is actually doing a whole lot of things over and over again consistently uh, and really just boils back down to a good old fashioned term called hard work. Uh, and just doing the things that you need to do to be successful, you know, over and over again. They always say the, you know, definition of, you know, success is, you know, being able to do the things you need to do when you need to do them over and over again to become successful, whereas unsuccessful people aren't willing to do those things. Um, and so that's what I hope to share with you guys today really is, you know, who is an ideal candidate for an entry level person. I'm going to be speaking mainly on that marketing side. So people for like canvassing, uh, working shows and events, retail uh, locations, uh, as well as call center. But really uh, the norms here for the thinking outside the box that we do for recruiting could work for really any entry level type position, really in any business. It's, it's just really, how do you go out there and, and do it just a little bit better and consistently uh, to get the people that you need? Uh, we're going to talk about who that ideal candidate is, uh, where you can find that ideal candidate. Once you find them, how do you attract them to even want to talk to you about your business? Um, and then once you've attracted them, you know, how do you really track and systematize that process to get the best result, which at the end of the day is to hopefully hire enough staff members to grow your business the way that you want to grow it. Uh, so getting into kind of who and where, um, we always like to say the typical demographic of a representative, especially on the marketing side, tends to be uh, in that early 20s to early 30s. Now, I have had uh, high school students that have worked for me as young as 15 years old, uh, as well as I think my oldest employee that I ever had out canvassing uh, was almost 70. Uh, was a great guy. He was actually one of the top guys. He's absolutely phenomenal. But as a whole, if I had to talk about um, the target demographic when I'm trying to recruit is I look for uh, that early 20 something, uh, really college age, I guess, is what a lot of this is kind of geared towards uh, and going after because they tend to be uh, people that are looking for hours that we offer. So when it comes to marketing, we want to uh, be able to market to homeowners face to face when that homeowner is available. So that's going to be, you know, evenings and weekends. 
Uh, and that tends to work really good with uh, college students. Uh, they're available on weekends and evenings. Um, so we're looking for people that are, you know, energetic, enthusiastic, you know, outgoing, good talkers, uh, definitely money motivated. Uh, we've had good luck with people that tend to be in that retail or hospitality type industries, bartenders, waiters, waitresses do really well because they're used to having, you know, just off the cuff conversations with random people throughout the day uh, in that they're trainable and coachable. We like to call it here at Tony Hody Training Consulting, the four H's. You know, are they honest? Are they humble? Are they hungry? And are they honable? And if somebody has that, um, that should be a, a very likely candidate for you uh, in your business. Um, where do we want to target and identify uh, these people? Uh, one, colleges and universities. Um, some you know, towns have more than others. Uh, I've been lucky in some of the areas of companies that I've worked at had a lot of different tech colleges and colleges around them. Uh, which made it great ground for recruiting. Um, you know, campus hangouts, government agencies, online venues and job sites, trade shows, um, and also retail stores and kiosks. Uh, you know, one of the things I really try to to reach out and target is if I'm going to a gas station or a store and I am helped with, you know, somebody that just seems really outgoing and happy and and seems like they enjoy a little bit what they're doing, you know, I let them know that, hey, uh, you know, I don't know if you're looking for a different opportunity or if you know anybody that is, but we like to hire on attitude and you seem to have a great attitude. You know, here's my card. Give me a call. Uh, and so really it's, you know, creating a target of uh, and culture of recruiting, you know, when you get around those type of people that you would want to have for your business. I like that example there, Kyle, if I can jump in quickly. You know, that's something that's happened to me as well in the past. You know, if you're at some retail store on the weekend, you got a great interaction with somebody and they just, they serve you so well that, you know, you're thinking, hey, this, this would be an awesome addition to our team. Here's my card. Feel free to give me a shout. And it's happened where a year and a half later after giving a card, someone called, hey, you remember I met you at, you know, Future Shop or Best Buy or whatever it is. I helped you with a computer. Uh, would you be open to, you know, meeting with me sometime? Yeah, sure. Come on in. And then boom, you've got to hire three, four years later. They're still doing amazing things at the company. So that, that, that notion of always be hiring is pretty cool. And I like how you identify all those, uh, all those spots there where you can find great talent. Yeah. And the key, um, you know, about recruiting is that we are really looking for the under employed, not the unemployed. And that's a big thing right now. Uh, you know, in, in, the, the United States and in Canada, I mean, unemployment rate is so low right now that if you want a job, you can get a job. Um, it you know, wasn't back in 2009 where everyone was getting laid off and, you know, the companies could hire the top talent they wanted because they were available. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas now, you know, someone's unemployed right now, you know, not that there's one-off circumstances and stuff, but that makes me really question why they don't have a job currently. And so when you do that personal recruiting stuff, um, you know, you're looking for top talent that's somewhere else that maybe got that job back when times were tough and they're just doing it because that's what's become uh, the norm for them is just getting up and going to that job every day. And if you can show them a better path and a better way, a better culture, more money and a career, you know, they, they might leave for that and, and come share that same great attitude they had with you at that company with you at your company. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a huge thing that you always want to get in. Uh, some companies uh, even make special little recruiting cards that, uh, you know, at Tunderland we did made up little special recruiting. They look like $50 bills that uh, were crumpled up that we could hand out to people and stuff because then we offered a, uh, you know, fast start bonus that, you know, $50 at uh, upon hire and 50 after a month and, you know, another 50 at, uh, at 90 days of employment is a little hiring bonus. So, you know, just fun little things like that to just kind of stick out from the rest of the group. But uh, that brings me to uh, my first kind of outside the box way to recruit is uh, what we like to call the vehicle flyer. Um, can be a very simple, you know, it doesn't have to be really designed up or anything, but explaining, you know, what we're looking for and what we offer for that. Um, and really what we're trying to do is just get them to trigger a call into us so then we can continue from there with our, you know, hiring, scripting and things like that to try to bring them onto our company. But uh, I used this method right here uh, when I started at my first company in this business. 
uh, in Madison there around all the colleges. And it garnishes phone calls immediately from um, people looking for work. You know, they come out of class. So you want to, again, target those areas where your uh, potential employees may, you know, hang out or go to school, you know, colleges, especially I like this. Um, and again, it's one of those things that's easier to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. Most colleges, <laughs> if you just show up and say, hey, I want to sticker cars, uh, are not going to let you do it, right? Um, but uh, again, we're, I'm going to talk a little bit later in the presentation here on dealing with colleges and how to really get the most out of it uh, to where they'll even get to a point where they'll start letting you do things like this. Um, but you know, also being respectful Again, you know, you're putting them on the driver's side window there so that way they're not stuck on the, you know, the front windshield and they're driving and have to stop and rip it off and throw it off the car, you know, and litter with it and stuff. And so kind of getting precise at where you put that right by the handle so they see it right away coming into the car. Uh, and again, just laying out there what we're seeking, what we're offering, what they can do. Um, and again, it gets phone calls right away. Um, so even if you, you know, maybe already currently have a canvassing team, I was the canvas manager at that point. I needed to build my team. And so every day before I went out and canvassed, I just spent 20 minutes in a parking lot, stickering up as many vehicles as I could in that 20 minutes. And then I would, you know, go off and generate leads. Um, and and I've every time I've done this, I've hired people, you know, maybe not the first day, but again, consistently doing it for amount of time does produce great results with the vehicle flyer. Kind of going along with the vehicle flyer is yard signs. Now, I know uh, most of the contractors probably listening uh, to this at some point have used yard signs. Usually uh, in our industry, they're used for when you're completing a job and working on a home and afterwards leaving it out in the front yard is a little mini billboard that people can see, you know, hey, who did the new work on the home and, and use it as a form of marketing. And, and hey, you know, as a yard sign for your jobs, they, they definitely uh, generate you some business. So if you're not using a yard sign and you're a contractor, a yard sign should be going in the front yard of every house you work on. Uh, but when it comes to recruiting, uh, you can tie it in the same exact way. So with that parking lot that I'm going to go vehicle flyer, I'm going to go ahead and put this sign by the entrances. Uh, but the key part is, especially with like colleges, is next time they mow the lawn, it's, it's going to get taken down and throw away. So you have to remember that it's not going to stay up for a long time. Uh, but there's some things that you can do to make it seem like it's supposed to be there. For instance, if the you know school's colors are maybe red and white, uh, you do the you know the whole sign up in red and white, the same colors as the school, and it just makes like it's supposed to be there. Um, and so we've had some good luck with so tying into school colors, or if you're placing them maybe by the mall, if you can kind of make it look like the mall sign a little bit, um, it just helps you keep that sign around a little bit longer, you know, but uh, depending on how many of these you buy at a time, they're not very expensive. Um, and so you can get some great legs out of that major intersections, uh, other student hangouts, you know, sporting events. Um, you know, if you're around a major sports team, you're probably not going to be able to get it put on their property, but Hey, what are the major routes that people are walking up to that property? Could you maybe go to a little business you know, off to the side of that and ask them if you, you know, if you threw them 50 bucks or something, if you could put your hiring sign up in their yard while people are walking by or whatever uh, to, you know, just to get the most traffic. Uh, and again, in conjunction with the vehicle flyers, these work really well because again, it's just another touch point of that same person that just pulled that flyer off. Now they're exiting the parking lot and they see the sign also. Um, the next thing for recruiting is recruiting days and job fairs. And a little story for myself with these, I did these for a couple of years straight and didn't really hire anybody out of them. I had some good conversations with people, um, but never a net hire. And, and it got so much so to the point that I actually stopped doing them for a couple of years. And um, heeding my own advice to stay consistent <laughs> and, and to do the things that, that work, um, any of these forms of recruiting is just like your marketing efforts. You're going to have multiple sources that you do in marketing. And from time to time, certain sources are going to stop working and you're probably going to stop doing them. But uh, I definitely challenge you to look back at some of those sources and try them again, because a lot of them goes in cycles where they may not work right now, but in six months from now, it might be the best thing you ever did. 
Uh, and so with job fairs, I actually started doing them again this last year just because I needed to hire more people. And I figured, hey, let's give them a shot again. And just about every job fair we did this last year, we hired somebody from it. Um, so there's, you know, the hard part about a job fair is they tend to only be like once a year. In other words, if you're going to a college for career day um, to set up a table, they probably only have that once a year. Or if it's maybe the town's job fair, again, they probably only have that once a year. So if you can find enough of them to do, um, you know, you can kind of keep busy throughout the months. But the other thing you can do is actually create your own recruiting days or job fairs. Once you can kind of work yourself into the college, you know, you can ask if you can set up in the, you know, the lunch area, the common areas where they're at um, and do some extra things. And you can maybe do it on a weekly basis for a quarter or something like that to really stay in front of the students and, and really get them to understand who you are and, and what you have to offer. So uh, do the ones that that are offered around your area, but also look at ways that you could maybe partner um, with some different uh, area places like colleges or places that have, you know, maybe even setting up at a, a movie theater to do it or something like that, or a mall, you know, a mall will rent you a space for a weekend if you want to come there and recruit um, or even set up for your business to market. So there's a lot of different ways you can kind of create your own recruiting day and job fair. And when you're doing that, you know, nothing, it doesn't really cost serious money. Some job fairs can get kind of expensive for what they charge for you to be there. But for the most part, I mean, if you look at this setup here, it's just a, a simple uh, tablecloth with your company name, a nice sign. Again, uh, if I was looking for a, a part-time job and I was in college and I walked by and I saw that giant ultimate part-time job, so I'd probably want to stop and talk to them at least and find out what it's all about, right? Uh, as well as, you know, a small flyer again saying who we're looking for and what we have to offer. Uh, but even taking it a step further, again, I always like to, to take whatever I'm doing and try to really supercharge it and get, you know, the most return I can out of it. So doing giveaways at your booth, uh, especially if you talk to the promoters, they might, uh, they want to get as many people to the job fair as possible because, again, that's how they make money is by selling those booth spaces to you. Um, and so letting them know that, hey, you want to do a giveaway, you know, maybe it's a Kindle that you give away at your booth. Maybe it's a PlayStation. I mean, it could be gift cards for dinner, uh, lots of different things that you could give away, but advertising that on it just may help that person that's like, geez, I don't know if this sounds like the company for me or not, if that's what I want to do. But hey, they might go ahead and submit that resume anyways, just because they got a chance to, to win something. And then at least you have the time to talk to them. Because what I found is, is some of the best representatives that I've ever had that have worked for me this wasn't exactly the job they thought they wanted, but once you know they were sold on the company and the culture and they came in and they worked hard, they found out and it, it just, I mean, myself uh, included in this, that you know the home improvement industry is a great way with a great career uh, that even if the company that you're working for right now, something were to happen, you know, as long as you can go knock on a door, go generate a lead and or move up to being a salesperson, go, you know, in home sale, you can probably get a job anywhere, anytime you would like. And so uh, trying to attract them to your booth to really get them uh, to want to interact with you is the idea about giving something away. Um, again, earlier in the slides, I talked about, you know, how do you really increase your campus recruiting and, and get those colleges to let you uh, spend more time there and even get to the point where they may let you put the vehicle flyers on the car is, is really working uh, with those colleges. Uh, one of the things that we've had really great success with in the past is offering tuition reimbursement to students. Uh, so what's one of the biggest things a student wants to do when they get out of college? Not be in debt, right? Uh, they want to get that paid off as soon as possible. Some even wish they never would have done it at all because they have this huge bill now. Um, and so, you know, creating, it doesn't really have to cost your company anymore to offer tuition reimbursement. If you know you could, for say, just for easy figuring, offer $50 for an appointment that one of your marketers generates for you. Instead of offering 50 as a bonus, offer them 25 as a bonus and also let them know that you're going to uh, also give them 25 in a separate tuition reimbursement you know, bonus or something. Again, it's, it's really not paying them anymore. It just sounds better to them. It's, it makes them you know, want to work hard. That, hey, if I work really hard, I can get my, you know, my student loans paid down by this company. Uh, a lot of companies don't offer that um, and just try to sell them on the money. And then 
they can take it and pay off their student loans. So we've had a, a great things with that. Again, with your different states or where you're at, uh, you may need to find out you know, what's uh, legal to offer with pay and taxes and all that and how you can work that out. But again, it doesn't really have to cost your company any more money. Uh, the other thing is to offer paid internships. So most marketing programs and colleges, uh, as well as you know business programs and all that, they have some type of internship component before uh, the representative is, uh, is allowed to graduate uh, from college. And a little backstory on that, uh, when I first started offering paid internships, actually one of the very first people I hired uh, under a paid internship uh, became my uh, personal marketing admin uh, for the department. Um, and she has since grown now a few years later to um, being one of the marketing directors for one of the major divisions of the company now. And so she, again, was a uh, person that probably wanted, you know, kind of navigated her way towards home improvements. Um, but, you know, the paid internship really peaked. Uh, you know, her interests. And so she came in just to do that, love the culture, love what we do, you know, learn the job. And, and again, now she has a career uh, that is, you know, paying her very well and, and she really, really, really enjoys. And so again, it's, it's thinking outside the box that how can you trigger somebody to want to wanna at least come and be part of, of what you're doing. Uh, and these are just some of the ways you can do it. Uh, one of the last things you can do for colleges is they're always looking for speakers to come into their classrooms and speak about, for instance, marketing. Um, the last time I went and spoke uh, to a class, a marketing class, um, I got three interviews out of it. You know, the last, uh, it was a 10 minute presentation. And my very last slide was, hey, if this sounds like something that you think you'd like to know more about or do, you know, let me know. We are hiring. We do offer paid internships. Um, and I got three interviews out of it. Two of them we actually hired and brought on. And, and one of the reps actually stayed for about a year and a half until uh, he graduated and then, you know, moved on from there. But uh, again, it was completely free. It just cost a little bit of my time to go in and speak to this college. Uh, but now they also list that we offer paid internships. We offer tuition reimbursement on their sites. Um, and when we want to do extra things like maybe set up our own booth, uh, you know, for recruiting, they allow us to do some of those things because we've now become a partner of theirs uh, because colleges want their students to have jobs. I mean, that's, uh, if you look at a lot of their advertising, it's, you know, 98% placement of, of our students and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. They want, that attracts, you know, students to their colleges that they can get them jobs. And so when you can show them that you can help them do what they're trying to do, uh, they're going to allow you to do more things with them in their school. Yeah, that's awesome, Kyle. I like the the angle you take with not necessarily making it so much about your company, but making it, <clears throat> excuse me, more about the the students, right? So positioning the the tuition reimbursement and you know the paid internships. Uh, like you said, some people may just discount. They see home improvement or some you know home rental company that just move on because in their mind it's not relevant to them. Yeah, they think but they're maybe is, swinging a hammer or something like that, and they're you know they're not the uh, the hammer swinging type, you know, which mm -hmm. is fine to at least get that chance to have them come talk to you is what you're looking for. Yeah, cool. So moving on here, uh, brings back to the old tried and true method, right, of, of posting, you know, health wanted ads. Um, and what we see most companies do is they post maybe one ad, maybe even a couple of ads through one, one site, and that is all they're doing for their recruiting efforts. And they don't understand why it's not working. Well, I put this ad out there. And again, right now, with the, the very, very low unemployment, you know, you're either going to get the unemployed, which isn't always the best uh, thing to be looking for, but you're only going to get maybe people that are truly, really unhappy where they're at and they're trying to come. Um, but you can even supercharge these by finding all the sites that you could post, you know, within and consistently updating your ads. Uh, one of my biggest things with the sites is I always like to run a couple of different ads. So in other words, if I was posting something on Indeed and let's say I was looking for a canvasser to go door to door, one of my ads might say, hey, I'm looking for a canvasser to go door to door. And if you're a canvasser that likes going to door to door, here's what we offer and why we're better you know, than anybody else. Well, the next ad might be, 
I'm looking for the same person, but it might be, you know, hey, are you a talented talker? Do you like being outdoors? Um, do you like, you know, hiking and walking around the local area? Um, you know, would you like to be a neighborhood brand representative for us? Uh, again, it kind of appeals to maybe a person that uh, maybe has some type of stigma that they think a door to door person isn't, uh, you know, a great job or something like that, but they may be targeted by that other ad and, and that may, you know, really link them to what they want to do and what they think they would like, uh, which would garnish a phone call. So, again, the biggest thing is to be able to track all this, you know, where you've placed your ads what ads you've placed. You want to constantly be testing ads, uh, changing words, trying things to really narrow down what works for you, your area, and the employees that you're trying to bring on. Again, don't just post one ad and think, you know, three weeks from now that ad's still going to be working because it's going to be so far pushed down. Um, you know, and create a budget for, for posting ads and, and just create a budget for uh, recruiting overall. That's another thing I see with a lot of companies is they just don't put any money towards it. Um, and just like marketing, if you never put any money towards marketing, it's probably not going to work out too well. Cause I always look at it as not hiring the right people or not getting enough people when times are good. How much did that cost you in lost revenue? Uh, you know, as a business owner, do you, do you know what it costs to hire somebody in your business? Most companies don't. Uh, to really sit down um, and figure out, you know, what does it cost us to hire somebody? Um, and then that way you can kind of create your business, you know, model of this is what we can spend on recruiting and it's going to be worth it uh, to, to keep our, you know, team full and, and generating leads. Um, and so again, it's just kind of supercharging on the classified ads uh, and really kind of getting pointed at, you know, the result that you're trying to get from that. So the last, uh, one of the last recruiting uh, ways I want to talk about is recruiting from within. So referral recruiting. Uh, if you don't have some type of referral program in your company, you absolutely need to put one together right now. Um, I've seen it as, as low as $50, you know, to hire somebody. If you, you bring somebody on and we hire them uh, and they last 90 days all the way up to, um, I was just working with a company that gives $1,500 to an employee if somebody makes it 90 days, if they refer someone to the company and they, they make it 90 days. So you really want to make sure though your team knows about that referral bonus. When I saw that they offered 1500, I was blown away. I'm like, wow, that's it, man. You guys got to have just one of the biggest teams I've ever seen and always have people. And, and they didn't. I mean, if I went and worked for someone and they, they're going to pay me $1,500 for everyone that I could bring to the company that got hired in May 90 days, I'd probably make more in recruiting <laughs> than, I, than I would from the job. Um, and so I was just blown away by that. But as I started to talk to their team um, and, and ask them about that, most of their team members did not know that they offered a $1,500 referral bonus. And so one of the ways that referral programs work is that people know about them um, and that you're able to stay in front of your employees. So every team meeting, you know, asking, hey, who do you know? Do you know anybody? You know, who did you run into? Uh, you, you know, you can run different, uh, you know, programs. Uh, one of the last things I did um, in my last company was we offered uh, for the year, whoever recruited the most people got a cruise, got a three-day cruise. Um, and so again, that doesn't, necessarily target all your employees to want to go out and do that. But that's why you got to get creative, put some different programs together. You know, hey, if you offer, you know, a nice dinner for every person they recruit, or, you know, if you do have a lot of, you know, college age students, you know, you can offer different things to them to, to want them to be motivated to go ahead and, you know, get people referred to their company. Actually, uh, Tony Hody, how he got his start in the home improvement industry, uh, was one of his friends was was a canvasser for a very large company, and uh, you know Tony wanted to hang out with him, and he's like, "No, nah, I got to go to work." And Tony's like, "Well, geez, you're going to work. Actually, I need a job. What are you doing?" He's like, "Come on, come on down with me today." And so they actually had a program where they could just bring a friend in and show him what the job was, you know, and get a referral. And so because someone asked Tony if he wanted to check it out for the day, um, you know, Tony's created an entire career in the home improvement business, both working for other people and having a very successful. Uh, you know, consulting practice because of that. Uh, but again, it's getting in, in front of and consistently reminding all of your current employees uh, that that bonus is there. 
uh, you know, and getting creative with things that you can give them and how you can do it, you know, posting signage up throughout your office, uh, in the bathrooms, you know, just everywhere. So it really stays uh, in front of uh, everybody as well as social media posts. Um, so social media is huge nowadays. Everybody's using, you know, the majority of people have Facebook, you know, have Twitter, have Instagram. Um, I've always liked Facebook the most for posting out just because I haven't learned those other platforms as well as Facebook. But um, again, though, still taking a multi-step approach with what you're doing um, with, you know, Facebook and, and getting outside of just posting what and it being done with it. So you can do a couple of things. You can post on your own company's Facebook page. Uh, if your company doesn't have a Facebook page, it certainly should these days. Um, and just posting on there, you know, that we're looking for great people. And again, is if you're going out to your customers and getting them to leave you reviews, uh, and things like that, one of the places they're going to leave review is on your Facebook page. You know, if you can get them to like it, uh, and, and post content on there for you, like a review that way they can go ahead and see when you make posts and stuff like that. And they might just say, Oh yeah, Hey, that company that did our roof. Yeah. You know, our, our son's home from the summer from college, maybe he should apply for that, you know? Um, as well as you can do boosted or paid post on Facebook. Uh, the really cool things with that is that you can pick your target demographic as well as your budget. Uh, so you really know, you know what you're spending and who you're targeting. Uh, again, on that roller coaster of different things working or not working, I've had Facebook work really well for me on the paid side. And I've also had it not work so well for me on the paid side. So it's again, getting in and trying it and just A-B testing things to find out works, uh, you know, what works for you and your company uh, in your area. The other thing is, is getting your employees to post and share. Again, tying that back to the referral bonus that they can get. Uh, for me, it was, they didn't have to know that person. They just needed to bring that person to me, give me their name and number. And if, as long as they gave me their name and number, they were the refer, you know, person for that. And so uh, when I had team meetings, you know, at, at one point I had upwards of 65 marketers on the team. And so having our monthly team meeting, you know, bringing them in and say, hey, everyone pull out your phones, you know, write a little post out for them to do up on the, the whiteboard that they could go ahead and copy uh, and, and just post on their own page that, hey, the company that I work for that I love, you know, is hiring, you know, if you're looking for something, you know, let me know, uh, we're having a contest or whatever. And, and you know, we'd get people that way to, to, you know, constantly stay in front of them as well as, you know, if they put in there, you know, hey, family and friends, you know, my company that I love so much is, is hiring. Could you go ahead and, and share this post? And you can even get your family and friends to go ahead and share and reshare. And next thing you know, you're getting paid for a referral of somebody that you have no idea who they were, but they reached out to you because, you know, one of your posts were shared or whatever. Uh, so again, everything I try to do, I try to, you know, start with it and, and give it the most likes possible to try to really uh, make what I'm trying to do become successful. So that really brings me to the last part of, of tying all these different sources in for recruiting and what it really takes then to, to get that person to want to come and work for you and to really figure out what's working. So, uh, you know, we want to create scripts for both fielding inbound calls and for calling out for applicants that maybe emailed you uh, their resume or if a, a representative brings you a referral with a phone number and name, uh, we really wanna script these out. I mean, our whole call centers are scripted out on how they generate a lead. Uh, it needs to be the same thing with recruiting so we can kind of make a process that gets us the same you know, result time and time and time again. Uh, so we can really start figuring out our budgets. And we know that if, you know, I stick $2,000 towards recruiting over this quarter, it should get me, you know, 10 hires or one hire or 20 hires, whatever it might be for your company. Uh, you should be creating an in-person interview outline. Um, you know, if it's you, the owner that's doing this for now, because you're a small company, uh, this way you can at least make sure, I mean, I, I before I did some of this stuff, you know, I would interview somebody and I'd be like, oh, my, wow, I never even asked them about this, you know, because I didn't have an outline in front of me to kind of take notes and to work through to make sure that this person I'm, I'm wanting to hire, you know, do they fit everything I'm, I'm looking for? 
um, you know, in the home improvement business, most of these companies we have, you know, we spend good time and money on uh, CRM systems to go ahead and track our leads and our sales and our production. And, and, you know, sometimes some of these companies we track to the ridiculous about, you know, where and when and how a lead was generated and how that converted. Uh, we need to do that with, um, you know, our recruiting efforts also. There is, I know some CRM specially geared towards uh, human resources in recruiting. You know, if you're a larger company, that may be something you want to look at. Uh, but for the smaller company, uh, I was just working with a client. We just created a spreadsheet that tracked data like the candidate's name, the phone number, their email, the you know the position they applied for, you know how the candidate was recruited, what recruiting source did they come from. Uh, so that was really good too. If it was a referral, that way we could tie back the date uh, to who the referred person was. Uh, so that way, you know, we make sure we pay our employees how we say we're going to. The worst thing you can do is offer a referral program, not pay the employee until they're beating down your door going, hey, I referred that person. Don't I get a bonus? Uh, that just doesn't work well for culture. So always staying on top of that. You know, did you set an interview with them? You know, if so, when is the interview date? You know, did you hire them or not? You know, reasons for hiring them or not hiring. And you can really kind of start creating a database. And, and maybe there's some people that you don't hire right now uh, or some people that you just weren't able to get in for an in-person interview because maybe another job became available to them that they wanted. Um, but, you know, if you create this database and you keep it, you know, in, in 90 days from now, when all of a sudden, you know, wow, we're, we're growing rapidly, I need to hire 10 more people, you can go back through that list you've created, and call the people that maybe you met with, and it just wasn't the right job for them now, or, or maybe you never got them into for an in person interview, because they accepted another position, and calling them and see, you know, hey, are you happy? Some of them may be looking for some, you know, work again, or a better opportunity. So, um, you know, keeping all that to be able to go back through. Uh, you can also put a little rating system on there. At, you know, how would you rate this representative for working for your company on a scale of one to 10? Um, you know, so you know which ones you definitely want to call back and which ones you may not want to waste your time on. But really, it's boiling it down to treating your recruiting just like it's a sales lead for your business. Um, and the last thing I'll leave you with that is speed to lead. So, um, you know, on the web, uh, I know, Mark, you help people do, you know, web stuff. And when a web lead comes into your business, you want to be calling that lead in less than a minute, uh, you know, speed the lead, the quicker you can call that lead, the quicker and better that lead is to convert to, you know, to a visit and to a, to a sale. And so creating your recruiting, especially for entry level people, you know, if you're recruiting for a hundred thousand dollar a year sales or management position, you know, that's one thing you can be a little more kind of slow and methodical on it. And people will wait a week or two to, to start and things like that. When someone's looking for an entry level position to make 10 to $15 an hour, they're looking for almost any position to make 10 or $15 an hour. As long as they sound like it's something they think they might want to do they'll take the job because they need to pay rent next week or they need money to live. Um, and so if you, you know, are getting a bunch of, you know, applications, you know, and resumes in on a Friday and you don't call them the next Tuesday for entry level positions, good luck. Uh, you need to figure out ways that you can call them instantly. Uh, in fact, when I get a resume in, I, if I plan on interviewing that person, which I'm going to phone interview them. And if it's the next step, I want to get them in today or tomorrow for an interview. And so, you know, as a business, that might mean you might have to interview them outside of business, op, you know, hours, because if they're currently working for a job right now, you know, they're not going to leave that job today to come interview with you, but they might finish their shift and be willing to come. So you have to be a little flexible with that too. But I always looked at it, if we couldn't get together in the next day or two, uh, good chance they're probably not going to follow through and, and, and not going to get hired. So again, speed to lead and really getting to those recruits as fast as possible, phone interviewing them again with the scripts that you've created to make sure that this uh, potential candidate is a good candidate for your business. Um, you know, one of the clients I worked with, they required that they had their own vehicle and driver's license, you know, and a good driving record because they had multiple locations that this person would need to drive to. And so that's one of the things they asked right away in the phone interview is, you know, do you have a driver's license and good driving record as well as your own vehicle? 
Uh, and that was one of the questions. If they didn't have that right now, that disqualified them from moving on with them. So in your scripting, you can create those different things that you're looking for in your company uh, to make sure that the recruit is someone that you want to move forward with. Yeah, that's this is all awesome stuff, Kyle. I think you uh, you mentioned the golden nuggets early on in the presentation. I think there were a bunch in here, a bunch of nice little hacks, uh, things that I think people, especially I would say on the smaller business side of things, uh, owner operator who has to do hiring themselves. Uh, major takeaway here for me at least is that you need to treat hiring as it's a job. It's all it can be almost a full time role. Now you may not have that luxury to put that much time behind it, but. Right. I think the way that you've kind of uh, mapped everything out for us, it's it's all little campaigns. You just got to be consistent. You got to track. You got to measure things. Of course, test. And then once you see the results coming in from any one of these efforts or initiatives, then you can start allocating more time, resources, money, whatever it is, to that. So that's really interesting. And the last piece, you know, you're talking about keeping tabs on things. Um, Indeed, specifically, you know, we've used Indeed in the past. Um, it's got almost like its own kind of built-in CRM where you can tag all your does, all yep. your, your 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 applicants. Now, I think in terms of uh, tracking who the referrer was, that may be a bit more complicated. You talked about asking questions like, do you have you know a vehicle and and you know valid driver's license? You can add those as custom questions in your hiring process on the application, and likely also add a question of a uh, question you know who referred you, right? And just put the person's name so you can. There's all these little hacks that you can kind of use to um, just keep tabs on that. And then at the very least, you've got Excel, which is not too, too complex. So, um, Kyle, this is this is all good stuff. I hope that um, people take away something from this uh, from this lesson. There's there's <laughs> there's a lot to go through. Um, but, yeah, I mean, put time and effort behind this. There's no reason why you're not able to go and, and bring on some some good talent. Um, Kyle, I see you just fired up the. Uh, the last slide here. So obviously uh, through Tony Hody, there's a couple reasons why somebody may want to get in touch with you. Uh, feel free to just run through what you're currently helping people with today. Uh, yeah. So Tony Hody Training and Consulting, we really focus on the front end of the business, which is the the marketing. And so the different services that we offer as a firm uh, is recruiting and placement of management level staff, um, so we don't get too involved in recruiting entry-level staff just because they tend to be a higher turnover type position. Uh, but we, what we can do is uh, find you a manager you know, to run your call center or run your canvassing program. Uh, we also uh, recruit for sales management, but then we can then teach those uh, managers that we recruit for you on how to do the recruiting um, you know, to build their teams. Uh, we offer training and consulting on canvassing show and event marketing, uh, telemarketing, retail marketing. We also offer manuals um, that are kind of the basic manuals to get started that if you're, you know, small business, you're looking to have your first full-time call center person, you know, we offer a manual that has all the call center scripts uh, and everything right in there that you could get a program started with, as well as each one of our manuals actually also has a pretty good section on all these different recruiting methods that I talked about. Uh, we always like to really say the manuals are kind of like the bricks and then, you know, myself, it's like the mortar that can really help you tie that all together and, and it becomes successful. Uh, one of the things, Mark, that we're going to offer here to your customers is a free 30 minute consulting call. Uh, if anybody would like to take advantage of that, they can email me at Kyle at TonyHody.com and we can schedule a time just to kind of go through what they're currently doing and what their goals are and how we may or may not be able to help them, uh, you know, move forward and achieve their goals. Awesome, Kyle. Well, that's uh, very appreciated. I know some people will take you up on that. So once again, Kyle, I want to thank you for putting this lesson together for for all the Academy members. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Insight. Absolutely. Our, our pleasure. And then maybe we'll have you back someday soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. All right. Take care.